Welcome to the shortest banjo podcast ever, the COVID Sessions, where everybody holds a banjo, and if they don't have one, they have to play air banjo. Marty Polio was the first stand-up comedian I saw do a live act at the Library Lounge in Lexington, Kentucky. That was a long time ago. And then when Night Court came on TV, a great old sitcom, I about jumped out of my chair seeing Marty playing a recurring character. Marty was generous enough to share his COVID life and other reflections on his career. Marty Polio. Oh, well, do your best. Okay, folks, y'all know who we're visiting with today. The famous, the one and only Marty Polio. Marty, how you doing? So glad you came. Doing fine, thanks. That's good. Well, listen. Um, fine is fine is pretty good. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. It, doing Marty, good uh, enough is, is good. Say it, what's that? Doing doing good enough is good. You know, it is. I'm it is. You're doing well enough. You know, it's like that's that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Because it could be everybody uh, wants to be so, you know, euphoric and happy, but you know, contentment is where it's at. It is. It's quieter. We're getting a big lag, aren't we? Not really. It's just I don't think real quick. I started as a mime, so, you know, I, first time I forced myself to perform was outdoors, and I hated it, it was horrible, I just had to get it out of the way, uh, that was sort of my open mic night, but, you know, from there, I became a professional mime and juggler, and then stand-up started coming around into the Midwest in the early 80s, I guess, Mid to early 80s. I guess it was like maybe 82, 3, that when clubs started, yep. you know, they used to be just on the coast, right? right. Yeah. Um, and then and then mine became uncool uh, pretty quickly. And so then I made a transition and I still snuck in my, my old stuff. But, um, you know, the transition of doing stand-up came – really pretty slowly i would just i'd do my act and i'd do a little stand up at the end i'd start talking and so it was you know uh it it it, it happened over a really super long period of time you know yeah. gradually uh stand up became more prominent in my act but it took me about it took me about six years to start feeling kind of comfortable the thing is i never felt comfortable and so i realized like I was trying to look cool and act calm and, you know, do cool jokes and stuff, but I was always uncomfortable doing stand up until I figured that, Hey, you know, this is not going to change. So my demeanor became uncomfortable and that was kind of my thing. Like, you know, all right, I'll get to the punchline, get off my back. So were you the first talking mime that you, had seen or had that been done before? I don't really know. I mean, I, I, I wasn't like my mind. I, I didn't do the, the cute stuff. I did yeah. what I called bar mime. That stuff was too cute for me. I didn't like Marcel Marceau. Well, they had, um, I kind of like Shields and Yarnell. Do you remember them? See, he had everybody where you wanted to be able to look like you were in a box. Right. Yeah. Yeah. How was that? Was that good? I did that. I did that to music. Yeah. I, I I did that to music. Oh, wait. Here, let me see. I've got I've got my screen set up so I'm looking at me rather than you. <laughs> That's <his best. laughs> okay. I see. So I got you didn't now. see my yeah. mom act yeah. just then. Do your mom. You didn't see it. Do it. Do it again. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, well, you're on the right track. I, that was just, I'd never yeah. done it before. That was the first time. Four more years. Really? It takes that long to learn mime? 
You know, it looks like it does. No. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's yeah, not I like do it. things that are, you know, my, my talent lies in doing things that are easy and making them look hard. The, the juggling I do is elementary. Yeah. It looks fantastic. It's, you know, I'm, I'm fast. Yeah. And, but everything I do is simple. And it's easy. simple. I saw you, you juggle quite well. Uh, you have a, an but see again, I, my thing is elementary. It just looks like I'm really good because I'm fast and I have kind of a unique style but my juggling is really simple. You know, yeah. when jugglers see me, they say, their comment to me is, interesting style. I always, I always make it look difficult. Now, I, a lot of people think I'm the best juggler they've ever seen. No, I mean because you were dropping, true, the, ball, because you were dropping the balls all the time, is what I meant. Oh, and oh made, yeah, I drop a lot. I drop a lot. I'm not yeah. that good. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm not that good. What? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. You're you're proving how hard it is uh, to juggle, but no, I've seen I've seen you do, I've seen you do a show where you didn't drop a ball. I remembered it. Every once in a while, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, well, I, I mean, I, I know. I you love know, it when that happens. Yeah, you bounce them off the floor. You, know, you put them on there on purpose, but I mean, you know, by an accident, it was good. Yeah, I don't really care if I drop. I've got some jokes for it, but right. sometimes. I drop so much, I run out of the jokes, and then it's just, you know, yeah. awkward. So now I'm just telling people, hey, when I drop, I'll drop some balls. I said, just don't let like, get you uncomfortable. I'm just, you know, up here, I'm just, you know, just trying to have some fun, and there will be some flow. You'll see it, you know, from time to time. Did you? I'm trying to quit. You didn't bring your banjo? No. Okay, you know you have to play air banjo, right? Any strings anyway, but with your right hand, start strumming like you're playing a air banjo. Uh -huh. now, now you got to make the sound. Bing, ba ding, 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 ding. Go ahead while you're. Bing, ding, 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 Okay, you've yeah. passed. I was in an air guitar t uh, contest one time. You played air guitar? Um, back when I thought. I did. I was in a contest one time in the 80s. Really? And uh, it was, yeah, I made it all the way to the finals where you're playing for uh, an MG sports car. It was like a, I was probably about in 78 or something, 79. And uh, I didn't win. You did. Uh, some big, hunky, handsome dude won. <laughs> I started realizing, well, okay, I'm starting to get the feel of contest now. Well, you thought you had a chance with that Jethro Tull vibe look, but they were looking for more of a, hmm. like a, you know, big hunk guy. Yeah, they weren't looking for finesse. I guess you're the only person I know, personally. Who was on Johnny Carson, the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson? Like, did you? And then when was Night Court? Was that the same time? Oh, maybe a couple few years after, maybe. Okay, all right. I'm not sure. Yeah. But you went out. You moved out to California yeah. with <clears throat> some heat behind you already, obviously. Not really. I, I mean, not really. No, I. Um, I'd established myself by going out there every summer and spending some time out there. I'd established myself in some clubs and one in particular, the Hermosa Beach County Magic Club. And that happened to be the place where Jim McCauley, the talent booker for The Tonight Show, would go often because he felt like that was more representative of the middle of the country, that crowd was, rather than going in town in, in L.A. Uh, gotcha. to the improv or the comedy store. So... Uh, I was big hit there, always, well, I worked there all the time, and so I moved out in February, uh, I, I moved out on my 30th birthday, and, um, and then I was on the show in November, so it was kind of like American Dream, it was great. Yeah, yeah. And then I was on a, then I was on a second time on New Year's Eve that same year. Wow. 
And you got to meet Johnny, obviously. So, but, but here's the thing. I would never have gotten on that show if it weren't for the fact that Jim McCauley, the town poker, used to be a dancer. So he appreciated what I did. You know, yes. he, there was that factor that was very important. Mm -hmm. um, if, because it's real common that, that bookers of any kind like pure sand up. Yeah. You know, they're real yeah. snobbish that way. Yeah. Yeah. And he wasn't like that. Yeah. yeah. And he yeah. stretched Johnny a little bit, I guess, in that regard. Maybe, but Johnny started out as a magician, so probably well, wasn't that's a, true. That's a stretch. right. Well, that's amazing. Where, there weren't where many mimes on there. I can only think of four mimes. I can think of Marcel Marceau, oh. Shields and Yarnell, uh, a guy named Yaakov Noy, who I studied with, an Israeli mime, and me. And I there probably maybe have been more, but I don't know anymore. Than, yeah. You know, it was unusual to see mime on that show. That was good days. That was exciting when you were a boy my age to be able to stay up late enough to watch Johnny Carson. That was big stuff. It was, was interesting like, too. When you, when you, when you look at those old shows on t on YouTube, you notice like there's this huge difference in how, uh, uh, you know, the crowd is completely different. Like a lot of times on some of those shows, especially like uh, Dick Cavett, there wouldn't even be applause when they would go, when they would cut to a commercial or come back. Uh, there was no wooting and yelling and hooping, you know, hollering and screaming. Like, a, like now there's like this degree of like uh, uppity happiness. Like, you know, there has to be this level of enthusiasm. When you come back in from a commercial, the crowd's just roaring with excitement. It's like, what bullshit? I hate that. I hate that so much. And some of those, especially, I mean, there's a, there was Merv Griffin, there was Dick Cavett especially, didn't do anything like that. And often on The Tonight Show, they didn't really do that. So, you know, most of the time. And I like that. There's like a peacefulness to it. There's like, you know, when you could just sit and watch a show and you didn't. In fact, some of those people, even the comedians that went on, the, on Carson, they looked like they weren't even, like they didn't even prepare anything. I mean, some of them came on and like really stunk up the joint. And it was like, you're thinking, wow, isn't there a little more pressure than that? Just showing up, man. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I remember. I think it's, to me, it, it's this uh, proliferation of the, of the idea that happiness is where it's at. Like everything has got to be happy, uppy, cheery, you know, it's yeah. like, yeah. you know, positivity and, and, you know, um, I'm, I'm going to support you and whatever you do, no matter who you are, what you do, what you say, I'm going to support like the way people are with kids. And it was just like, I don't know. There's something that changed about just the fact that it's like what you said in the beginning, like uh, when I said happy enough is pretty good, you know, mm -hmm. contentment is where yeah. it's at. Like sure. this, this happiness factor has just gotten out of hand. You know, it's, it's just like, there's too many plastic bottles and there's too much happiness out there uh, because happiness is not even that important anyway I think it's bullshit it's like you know it's it's a fleeting thing anyway don't put too much stock in it because you're gonna be disappointed when it when it goes if you if you feel bad just wait around a while you'll feel better if you feel great and really happy that's gonna change too so you know it's just thing it's just something it doesn't have to be the end all be all but that's the way culture has made it in this country well that's true i'm i'm not so happy anymore i think look at it that way but maybe that's that's I, good that's my me. goal man. i know that's good for me but you I know try, the, i try oh, to take the happiness and the fun out of everything yeah well I, I, listen you're good at it marty so you should be, uh, be proud thanks uh, I agree that it creates a, a more healthy, long-standing kind of a chill. If you accept the, you know, the low, it's more of a wavelength than it is just this highly yeah. sustained, you know, uh, you, you can't, orgasms stop at some point. Yeah. Or call your doctor. 
but well, you know, still, people yeah. people think that I'm depressed because of my demeanor and my yeah. monotone yeah. voice right. and all that. And that's sort of become part of my shtick on stage, I guess. But but I mean, uh, you're I'm earnest fine. about it. I, I'm hardly ever depressed. I'm just hardly ever depressed. I'm pretty content. Yeah. And you know, the shutdown hasn't really changed me. I haven't. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I'm kind of a hermit anyway, and um, I've been doing fine. I, I, I kind of miss, I miss live music and I miss playing basketball. Yeah, you think yeah. it's funny that the liquor, what were you saying about the liquor stores? Mm -hmm. Yeah, isn't that hilarious? That, that was from day one, that was an essential. <laughs> I, I think it was one of the wisest decisions throughout the whole uh, pandemic. I mean, you know, you had to keep people. I guess. Up. I mean, you're an alcohol guy. I'm not an alcohol guy. I think it's like scourge of the earth. I think it's awful. I think really? it's the worst drug, the most dangerous drug. Um, you know, the, all the friends I've had that have met an untimely demise have 90% of them has been alcohol related. Um, I just, now I've been partaking in recreational drug use in a, a responsible way um more so in this pandemic than before but you know I'm, i mean you know a little weed mushrooms i've got some acid i haven't taken yet i was just you know just kid stuff you know right but sure. yeah it's nice it's yeah. pleasant it's not harmful i mean you know it's like and i'm careful i didn't do anything for like i i was a pothead and then when I was 24, when I was first starting out becoming professional, I decided I just couldn't do it. I, I quit drinking smoking pot and smoking cigarettes in the same day. Mm -hmm. And I missed pot more than any of the other ones, uh, even cigarettes. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I quit for you know 11 years or so. And, and uh, then, I don't know, I just started doing it gradually. I'm, I'm scared of messing with my serotonin levels, you know, because they say that that's one of the reasons why antidepressants became such a big thing in like the 90s, I guess, because the uh, Gen Xers, I guess they were mostly in the 90s, the Gen Xers were doing, going to those raves and they were doing ecstasy, Molly, mm -hmm. and that more than anything heightens your serotonin level where you're in total euphoria. Mm -hmm. I haven't done stuff. I'd like to try it once, but I haven't, I haven't done it. But, but anyway, then your brain stops being able to produce its own serotonin levels. And, and so that's what I'm respectful of. That's why I don't do stuff a lot. Yes. And then when I do do it, it's great. It's yeah. really nice. You know, just it's, there's buoyancy to it. You know, to me, alcohol, the, the buoyancy, the good part lasts such a short time. And then it's a matter of maintaining it. And it yeah. makes you, you know, slur your words and fat and stupid and make bad food choices and like, mm -hmm. you know, angry, and, you know, fighting, like, you know, everything bad and it yeah. kills you slowly. Yeah. You well, know, horrible, you, you know, painful. Yeah. Not if you drink enough fast what? enough, you drink enough fast enough, it'll kill you right then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, enough about liquor, liquor. I just met her. Um, so going into the pandemic, the stand -by. absolutely Legger, she's my cousin first or second, oh, I'd kiss her first. See, I've, I've got a million of them, but, uh, nobody wants to hear them anymore. That was when I got out of comedy. Anywho. I know, you know things have changed. And they have. It's kind of the reason I, I'm thinking about stopping um, comedy. Thinking about stopping comedy. Are you? Yeah. What are you gonna do? Yeah. I, yeah. My stuff isn't relevant. I, you know, I'm a goofball. My stuff is just. I mean, let's face it. I'm. I do a clown show. I mean, you know, it's like I don't do relevant stuff. I. I never did. I honestly don't even have an interest in doing that. But, but um, I, you know, the stuff I've been enjoying experimenting with the stuff about aging and death. And that only works some time. Uh, and I noticed it doesn't work well with older crowds. <laughs> Wouldn't really miss stand-up. Yeah. I, I, you know, in a way, 
I kind of feel like it's, in my age, it's a little bit undignified to do something for a living where I have to get the acceptance of strangers. You know, it's sort of, it's kind of embarrassing in a way. Well, I don't need it. I don't need it like I used to. I don't, don't even want it really. I want to, I kind of want to, I do my YouTube videos. I'm trying to Mm -hmm. work on some how to's and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Um, I posted a couple and I enjoy those throw in a few dokes and um, I enjoy those, but in a way I kind of just want to sort of disappear. I've done a few. I didn't like, I didn't like them. Um, I didn't like being on the ship. I didn't like, I, no, I, I hate it. I hated it. Nothing to do but eat all this rich, buttery food and get gout. And it's just horrible. <laughs> gout. Some people That's, like them. Gout? Oh, the cruises. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Butter. Butter sculptures. They'd have butter sculptures. But, yeah. That's how much butter there was. Yeah. You know, the shellfish and butter sculptures. <laughs> If you were going to take on the persona of an animal to do a stand to to do your stand up act, you know, and craft actor, I mean, literally wear a cost you know costume. Mm-hmm. What what animal would that be? Probably a squirrel. That way, I could just break out of one joke and go into another. You know, it's just like, you know you know, how to bat it crossing the street. It's, you know, the ADD factor. It would be a great bailout for, for jokes. You know, just, you see something's not going anywhere. You just like cut out right mid sentence and then go to the next joke. Go to the next. Yeah. Would you, you actually... New York... <laughs> would you be a New York squirrel or a, a rural squirrel? Cause there's a big difference. Um, I'd probably be a city squirrel because uh, I'm, you know, kind of getting kind of gaunt. What would be the squirrel's point of view other than just being skittish? Oh, definitely one-liners. No point of view. That's just true. random one-liners. That's true. That's fast, fast, fast. Yeah. I was like one yeah. to the next. Yeah. Yeah. yeah a squirrel wouldn't get into like yeah. some storytelling or anything. Absolutely not. No. No. You don't like this one? I got another one. Just like this, you know? You don't like that? I don't like it either. Let's do the next one. What's 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 squirrel taste like? It's squir it's squirrely. You know, it's kind of squirrelish, really. Is about the best description of it. You know, it's a it's a I heard, um, I heard there's some kind of little um gland that you have to remove somewhere or where the meat is bitter huh. all this sounds just horrible to me i can't you know imagine i know that like if you're hungry enough you can look at an insect and and think about deliciousness you know uh, that's going to happen to your brain mm-hmm. um you can take the eyeball out of a fish because it has liquid in it if you need that liquid and and you don't think ooh an eyeball of a fish you don't think that no, you're just and then water. people who catch any kind of meat any kind of meat in their survival situation they they call it first meat is supposed to be like wonderful no matter what it is you need you need a scorpion after about four days Big supposedly the white the, the bulb on the tarantula has white stuff in it and it tastes like ice cream Oh, I didn't know that. That's what some little kids told Anthony Bourdain. In that same episode, somebody, they gave him some coffee with salt in it. And the African guy <laughs> said, do you like this? And he goes, no, <laughs> you put salt in my coffee. Do you drink it? And the guy goes, no, but they drink it in the other villages. <laughs> Um, a uh, some how to's for YouTube. And like, I've done a couple. I posted a couple on uh, work on my toilet. You know, I was working on my toilet. I did a I did a toilet one, and then two and a half years later, I did a follow up to the toilet one. And those both went over really well. Like I get many more views on that stuff than I have ever gotten on any kind of creative project right. that I've ever 
done. Yeah. Uh, any kind of artistic thing. And um, so I call them the meticulous hack because I, I'm a hack. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm really meticulous. So just by way of uh, over engineering things, I probably more than likely do it better than the professionals. Oh. And so that's, that's my angle on it. Your um, angle and is... some things I know how to do well, like electrical work. I know how to do that really well. Uh, but some things I'm just total hack, you know, plumbing and toilets and all that. I hate that stuff. I hate it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, so there I am struggling with this, you know, big beast of burden. I hate those things. They're just so such old technology. And I'm bitching about it and coming up with better ideas and all that. And so, yeah. so those those videos. In fact, I'm thinking about like doing them all uh, on just a, that same toilet. Like just keep doing a file up on that toilet. Like stay on the change toilet. the uh, the ring. Yeah, I got. I I, had, I made a um, a um, video or a, rather a fake window in my kitchen with a with a TV behind it, and I have you know an outdoor scene playing on it. Sometimes I'll just have screensavers on it. Everything I do, just about everything I do is horrible. It's, you know, yeah. horrible jobs that I should never take on. Well. Yeah. But I enjoy those. Yeah. I enjoy those. That's what I'm doing mostly. And, and also changing people's minds on Facebook, you know. Uh, change, you know, I can't tell you how many people have, have said, hey, Marty, I thought I had my political views all together until I read your post. Now I've completely, totally changed my mind. I, <laughs> He, he is such a Trumpster, like, yeah. you know, yeah, the yeah. ultimate Trumpster. Yeah. And, and just any comment that anybody makes, he'll come in and try to spoil your fun with, you know, some kind of comment, to, you know, and then somebody will say, somebody will say, Mike, you need mental help. And he goes, oh, mental help is just for snowflakes. <laughs> you know, it's so funny. You got to hand it to him. He's, he's, he stays in that group and just to give people shit. I do. I do too. I think, you know, it's, I was spending too much money in restaurants anyway. And, um, I, my activities probably will be curtailed maybe for the rest of my life now that I'm so used to things being the way they are now. Um, and knowing that I don't need all that activity or stuff to do. It's, yeah. uh, you know, I'm fine. I can do my own thing. I can entertain myself. I'm, I'm happy enough. Peace, brother. All right, peace. Thanks for doing this.